One of your most powerful tools and your single most informative resource is PubMed.gov. And again, this was uh, talked about by, uh, by Dondi uh, Nettles extensively, how he uses this tool. And I would really like for all of you to get familiar with this. There are 10 characters to type in, PubMed.gov, all right? You type that in your browser, and what comes up is a screen that looks like this. It's just like a Google search. The difference is, this is not searching everything that anybody and his neighbor has posted on the internet. This is searching the peer-reviewed published biomedical literature, not just from this nation, but from the entire planet. Every journal that meets the qualifications that conducts peer-reviewed publication of biomedical research is included in this database that's run by the National Library of Medicine of the United States of America. PubMed.gov is your tax dollars at work, and it's probably one of the most efficient and useful uses of your tax dollars. <laughs> there, there are many, but this is up there. And it's an outstanding contribution of this country to the well-being of the entire planet. All right? It works just like Google. So if you go bring up PubMed and you type in, in the, in the search field, something like ProTandem, and you hit enter, what you see is all of the publications specifically discussing ProTandem in the published peer-reviewed biomedical literature. And you might expect there would be hundreds, because you may not have a feel for how this thing works. Six is a very substantial number for where we are and how long we've been at this. Let me tell you, if you had done this search one year ago, there were three. All right, so in the last year, this has doubled. There's a seventh waiting in the wings, and I hope soon uh, you'll see a seventh paper there. These are independently funded uh, for the most part. The first couple were funded by the company, and everything after that has been independent. Public, uh, funded by private agencies such as Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, such as uh, the American Heart Association, and from federal funding, such as the National Institutes of Health. If you click on any one of those publications, what you see is the entire abstract, right? And if you see the icon in the upper right uh, of, of this uh, screen, it says free, um, full text PDF file, a, form, a reprint format of this paper. Again, that icon always appears if the research was funded at least in part by federal money. That is, your tax dollars also supported in some part this study on the effect of ProTandem on Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Because your tax dollars paid for it, you're entitled to download the full text research in a, in a PDF file. And all six of the papers shown here have those uh, downloadable PDF files available. If you go back to the initial screen and you type in, let's say, oxidative stress, you would find 81,000 hits. All right, that's a lot of research on oxidative stress. Protandum is aimed at reducing oxidative stress, but you can search more focused on the term protandum, or more broadly on the term oxidative stress. If you type in oxidative stress and any medical condition that you comes to your mind, you'll get, again, a number of hits. If you in this case, oxidative stress and dialysis, which is a procedure that people undergo when they're in kidney failure, you find uh, an amazing 1113 publications on oxidative stress and dialysis. You can focus even more tightly, if you want to, by searching a topic with NERF2. Again, ProTandem, and I'll, for newcomers in the audience, I'll explain what NERF2 is and what 
Perdanum does to it in just a moment. But here if you do a search of cancer and NERF2, that is what NERF2 activating agents do to cancer in various studies, 475 papers already, and this is rapidly expanding. I typed this in to make this screen capture a few days ago, and looking down the first few hits, the hits are arranged by the most recent. So what you see here is a paper that may have just been published within the last few days. And so this number is changing continuously. You see the, the most recent stuff first. And as I was looking at the results of this hit, uh, I noticed one paper that really changed an important way that I have viewed protandum vis-a-vis -vis cancer. And I discussed this with a number of you this morning, and this is a big topic, protandum and cancer patients. And this paper looks at not protandum, but curcumin, one of our ingredients. And curcumin in and of itself is a nerf 2 activator. Protandum uh, is greatly amplified. It works better than curcumin because we've got the synergy of the five. But the mechanism is the same. Curcumin activates nerf 2 Protandum activates nerf 2 more strongly. And just look at the title of this paper, and I think this can speak to you. There, it's a little obtuse, maybe, but you can, look, you can look at that title and figure it out. Curcumin, the golden spice from Indian saffron, uh, the researcher here is Dr. Agarwal from India, and he, he has a particular affinity, I think, for, <laughs> for, for Ayurvedic medicine, for traditional medicine from India. He's at Baylor Medical Center in Houston, Texas, well-known in the field of NERF2 activators. So curcumin is a chemosensitizer and radiosensitizer for tumors. What does that mean? Tumors are treated with chemotherapy and with radiation. The reason for treating tumors with those two treatments, and they both increase oxidative stress substantially, is that unlike most other therapies that you get from the doctor that tend to make your cells work better, these two are designed to kill cells because your body, if you have cancer, contains cells that are rogue cells. They're out of control. They're multiplying, uh, trying to overtake your body. And a concern has been, because chemotherapy and radiotherapy both increase oxidative stress in an attempt to kill cancer cells, there's been a controversy for a number of years. Is antioxidant therapy a good idea here? Because you may actually protect the cells that you want to kill. You're using a therapy that put focused oxidative stress on these cells with the idea of pushing them over the edge, killing them. And therefore, I have recommended to everyone who's asked me for the last five years, should I take protandum if I'm if I've got a cancer diagnosis, I'm about to undergo chemotherapy or radiation therapy. And my conservative response has been, because this is controversial, some scientists argue, don't do it because you may protect the cancer. Others have said, do it because you may protect the other tissues more than you protect the cancer. We didn't really have a definitive, definitive answer. This paper says, Activating NERF2 actually sensitizes the tumors to radiation and to chemo. So it's going to have a bigger effect. Okay? And the other part of that title is just as important. NERF2 activators are chemo protectors and radio protectors for normal organs. So imposing a NERF2 activator changes the way that tumors and normal tissues respond to radiation, and it does it in the best possible way. It makes the radiation more effective at eliminating the tumor and less effective at causing damage to the rest of your body that really needs to survive. Right. So again, what's my point here? This is a changing scenario every week I do these searches myself. I look at the most recent new papers that have just hit the press, and this is the kind of thing I learn. And it changes the way I view pro protanum. I said 
What I say today about it is very different from what I said four or five years ago, and this is precisely the reason. We're, we're in the middle of a rapidly changing field, and we need to stay tuned to this company and to sites such as PubMed.gov to get the latest information. So don't just sit back and say, I learned about ProTandem a year ago, I'm going to use what I learned then. You need to keep at it. I wish it were simpler, but it isn't. It's complicated, so hang in there. Do your best to keep up with this. Do your best to use this as an impressive tool. If you sit down with someone who's trying to decide, should I take this supplement or another supplement, a competing product perhaps, flip open your laptop, type in pubmed.gov and say, what's the other supplement you're concerned about or considering? <laughs> type it in. Now, s some of them actually do have peer-reviewed published studies, not many, not many products. Most products you type in, you get no hits at all. It's not there. And they may say, well, the company says on their website it does this, it does that. Okay, they, if it's true, they should submit it to a journal, they should get a peer-reviewed published paper, then it will mean something.